Hi there. Welcome back to our college algebra learning guide for week one. We are in part two. So if you missed part one, I'll be sure and put the link to it in the description so that you can be sure to have all of the examples for week one to help you. Now, just a reminder, you'll want to subscribe and hit the bell so that you make sure that you get all of the updates for the videos that I'm posting to help you as you're working through the college algebra course. Um, also a reminder, this video is only going to cover the four problems that are on the learning guide for page two. If you need the learning guide, of course, I've got it linked there in the description. And you'll have also the links to the other videos for week one as well. But this video is going to focus on exponents, inequalities, and rational expressions. And so in our box of notes here, I've given you a diagram to help you with some of the terminology that we're going to use as far as having a base and an exponent and what that really means. Um, and then I've also given you the textbook-like rules for exponents because I think those are going to be very, very important. You'll want to have those in your notes as you're working through things in week one. So let's jump in, friends. Number one here, I've got five to the fourth power. And that, according to here, the base would be five. The exponent would be four. And that means to write our five four times. So I'll write it four times. Two, three, four. And I multiply with each one of them. And so I'm going to go ahead and multiply that. That's uh, 25 times 25, which is 625. Now, I hope you're using a calculator too, right? If you need a good calculator, there are some great ones at this website. If you'll just Google Desmos calculator, you're going to get a wealth of tools there that'll help you. And you can, it's completely free. So you can use your calculator to check your answer on that one as well. Let's move along to number two. Um, I know it doesn't seem like it relates, but it kind of does. So let's look at graphing x is greater than three. Now, when we look at an inequality, the first thing we have to do for our notes, we're just going to say less than or greater than means an open circle. That means that at three, I'm going to put an open circle. Okay, now just for our note's sake, a greater than or equal to or a less than or equal to means a closed circle. That just means you would color in that circle. Okay, now where are the numbers that are greater than three? They are to the right, so we shade the portion to the right. And that's it. That's graphing an inequality. Okay, let's take a look then at number three. Number three is asking us to evaluate this expression if we know that x is negative two and y is four. That just simply means we're going to replace a negative two. We're going to replace an x with negative two. And we're going to replace the y with 4. Now, I like to just create space for my notes. Oops. And I, want it, I wanted a parenthesis there. That's OK. We'll fix it. I work in pen so you can see it clearly, but then sometimes I'd like a pencil. <laughs> so that y is gone. There, we've replaced it with, we're going to replace it with a 4. So in place of the x, I'm going to put negative 2. In place of the y, I'm going to put a 4 and a 4. Now, if you remember from video 1, we talked about order of operations. We still have to follow those order, that order. And that order tells us that we have to do parentheses first. Well, while we do have parentheses in here, there's nothing going on in the parentheses but a number. So we get to skip that step. I don't have any exponents going on. So now I'm going to multiply. When we write a number in front of a parenthesis, that means to multiply. So I've got 5 times negative 2, which is negative 10. I've got 4 times 4, which is 16. 
And then in the denominator, I've got 4 plus 4. Okay, now I'm going to add on the top. So negative 10 plus 16 is 6, and 4 plus 4 is 8. By the way, friends, if you're not confident with your negatives and adding positives and negatives, use your calculator for that, okay? This is not intended that you would have to do this all on your own, but use your resources. Now, we do need to go ahead and reduce this because 6 and 8 are both divisible by 2. So that gives me 3 fourths. And that, friends, is my final answer. Okay, number four then. Number four asks us about domain. Now, we have two rules for domain. Um, and that is that denominators cannot equal zero. And square roots must be positive greater than or equal to zero. Those are the two rules, okay? Which rule do we need here? Well, I don't see any square roots, so this must be the denominator rule. So let me tell you what I do. I literally take that denominator and I say it can't equal zero. Notice I took the whole denominator. I said it can't equal zero. So now I go, okay, well, I can add two to both sides. By the way, I knew to add two because there was a minus two there, and I want to do the opposite. So now I know that x cannot be two. How simple was that, right? Use those two domain rules. Now, this week, you're going to primarily use the first one about the denominators. But that's not to say in the future you might use the others, okay? All right. Thanks for watching for these four examples. I'm going to put the link for the next um, part for week one. So you can just click on it if you're following along to get all of your notes. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so that you'll get a notification for the next videos that I post. Bye for now.